more things change, the more they stay the same. Boundaries shift, new players step in, but power always finds a place to rest its head. What up guys, this is BZK Harrier here. Today I'm bringing you a gameplay from MWR. Uh, playing Team Deathmatch on Crash. I believe I'm using the MP5 for most of this, so enjoy that. Today we're here to talk about the top 10 things that uh, World at War, or World War II Call of Duty will need to be successful. <coughs> to uh, jump right in. The first thing is going to be weapons and weapon variety. Uh, depending on how long the prestiges are, if they stop at 50, 55, or 80, like Marvel for 2, uh, I'm going to need a lot more weapons per category. Uh, Infinite Warfare this year only provided like 5 assault rifles, 5 subs, um, 4 sniper rifles, and 3 LMGs. Personally, to me, that's not enough. There needs to be at least somewhere between... Uh, 8 to 10 assault rifles, 8 to 10 submachine guns, um, 4, 4 to 6 LMGs, and 4 to 6 snipers. And granted, if you don't switch up how the uh, weapon classes work, like making a DMR uh, class only or whatever else you want to do. There just needs to be more about weapon variety and more weapon selection so players won't just huddle around the same two weapons the entire game. That was one of the bigger problems Infinite Warfare had in my opinion. People just huddle around the MV4 and the K-Bar too much. I think with a better or bigger weapon variety and bigger um, <clears throat> weapon diversity will make the game a healthier, funner experience for new players and veteran players alike. Uh, jumping right into the next one, we're talking about kill streaks. Uh, good guns bring good kill streaks. So, uh, this the past couple years of Call of Duty for kill streaks have not been too amazing. I think they've been a, la a little lackluster. I think they need to kind of bring the uh, Modern Warfare 2 and like Black Ops 2 kill streaks back. We need like a, a bunch of aerial kill streaks you can either A control or B just send out to do damage. I wouldn't mind seeing like an attack helicopter or like a payload. Obviously, airstrikes need to come back, precision airstrikes. Uh, Harrier was dope in Modern Warfare 2, but I don't know how they'll work that into the World War 2 theme. Um, artillery could come back. The. Uh, uh, depending what kind of uh, vision they take with this World War II theme, they could go with a, uh, like a dystopian World War II where it's not quite following history, but it could have some uh, weapons or elements that weren't from that timeline, depending on which way they go with it, which would be cool. But I definitely think Call of Duty needs some dope kill streaks to go along with it. Uh, this year's have been kind of lackluster. There's only a couple of them that really uh, do anything for you, and all the rest are kind of like cheap imitations of what they once were. Uh, to go in along with multiplayer. Multiplayer is going to be a big part of this, obviously. Um, prestiges and prestiging. I definitely think the max prestige should probably just disappear and move away from 10. Uh, it seems like every Call of Duty has like a 10th max prestige. And then they're like, oh, we're going to add 20 more prestiges to the game like two months in. Like, no, stop it. Either just make it 30 prestiges from the start or do what uh, MWR did where it's like 20 prestiges and then... Uh, 1,000 levels above the 20th prestige. So it basically gives you a reason to keep going, keep grinding. Now, if there is uh, 20 levels of prestige, I hope they make a bunch of rewards for them, such as uh, unlocking custom slot classes, kind of like MWR. You can have like 25 or 30 of them, whatever they are. Uh, unlocking perks or weapons early, or so you don't have to re-rank up to get them again. Uh, maybe doing double XP, maybe doing uh, a couple other rewards, depending on how you look at it. Um, to go right into our next option for multiplayer is maps. Map design has been pretty decent for the last couple years. Uh, three lane maps are always nice. Uh, choke points are nice. Uh, when I think of bad map design, I always come to one map in my head. I'm sure all of you have the same feeling. It's from Ghosts. It's... Um it seeds that giant castle, like Highlander map that was very open, very a bunch of clunky stuff, too big to actually play six v six on, and you'd have the time limit run out before you actually get the total amount of kills to win. Uh, so we don't need any more maps like that. Three lane maps, choke points, all that good stuff. Please bring it back. A new thing that's been kind of a, a staple in the newer Call of Duties is customization. Now that can either be like character customization, weapon customization, emblem, or uh, player card. You're kind of going to need a variation of all of these to keep a lot of players happy. Uh, I definitely think 
emblems and player cards need to make a return. Uh, customization for your characters, I don't really care about. It depends. They might have like perk customization like Black Ops 1 did. Who knows? You'll be able to have a little bit of uniqueness for your character. We'll see what happens. Uh, speaking about customization, we're going into Emblem Editor. Emblem Editor was pretty much in every Call of Duty since, I think, Black Ops 1. Black Ops 1 was the first Emblem Editor. Black Ops 2 followed it up. 3, um... Modern Warfare Remastered does not have one, but that's because it's a remastered. And Infinite Warfare did get one, but like three months into the game when it was kind of like, why, why now? Um, Emblem Editor needs to be at the start, hands down at the start. Another thing that needs to be at the start is leaderboards. Leaderboards need to be there from launch. I don't know why it takes you three months to put them into the game, but it needs to be there from launch. I want to know where I rank amongst uh, the top players in the world, or where I rank in game types, or score per minute, or kills, or whatever else has been happening in the game. Uh, with that said, leaderboards and being competitive, there needs to be a competitive game type or competitive playlist, kind of like a league player from Black Ops 2, where they follow the MLG rule set and they do like 4v4s or squads and there's rewards and there's tiers and there's like diamond class, gold class, and you go in and you try super hard to be super sweaty at the games you want to play. Uh, we all know that this year a supply drop system will somehow be returning. My only hope is that it comes back like Modern Warfare Remastered in the sense that you can unlock everything through salvage, but you can also unlock it through the supply drops. The salvage you get a lot more of in Remastered, and say if they drop weapon DLCs, you can have them drop through the supply drop, or you can spend your salvage on five different pieces to eventually unlock the actual weapon itself, which would be kind of awesome. I would appreciate that. And through supply drops, you'll obviously have more customization items, more player cards, more camos, more reticules, things like that that'll make your experience a little bit unique to the next player. Last and final thing, I definitely think there needs to be another remastered game. Hopefully, it'll be, hopefully it will be World at War remastered, and that's what I would love to see to go with the World War II aesthetic. But we'll see what happens. I hope you guys enjoyed my top ten list for what needs to be in World War II Call of Duty. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And as for now, this is BZK Hellator signing off.